Hello, welcome to Social Movements uh, with Anthony Esposito and myself, Summit Wallace. We will be exploring Lehigh University's art gallery with regards to images and pictures that represent social movements. Um, we have a wide range of years, so please join us. So our first photograph here, we have a, a young African-American male. Um, he's actually a University of Chicago student. Um, this is in the 1960s in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and he's down here. I'm not sure if it was a freedom ride or one of the sit-ins, but it was some sort of civil rights movement. And this photo, I mean, in itself has so much passion. You can just tell by looking at his face, the kinds of emotions that he's feeling, the kind of the passion and, and everything that he's feeling while, as this officer is kind of restraining him here. Um, and I think it's really interesting to look towards the background of this photo at some of these uh, white males who are kind of sort of just standing there blankly with their in the background kind of just observing. Um, they don't seem to really trying to be helping him or really feeling anything. It's sort of an eerie sense looking at them. Um, Summer, so, what do you think? You notice anything? Yeah, I totally agree. The people in the background actually catch my eye more so almost than the people in the front, just because like you said, they're kind of just staring blankly as if this happens all the time. And interestingly enough, this does happen to this individual all the time. Um, we read that he's been arrested and basically countless offenses just for protesting, nothing violent. Um, so this picture actually does a perfect job of generalizing this individual, Taylor Washington, um, because this does happen to him all the time because he's sticking up for what he believes in and the people seem to see this all the time. Yeah, I think there's something to be said for that as well, that he's kind of going on his eighth arrest here and he doesn't even seem to be thinking of backing down, he's kind of just still continuing to fight with, for what he believes in. And that's definitely something that that photograph really captures is this pure will to like continue going forward with what he believes in. Um, it's very commendable actually. Absolutely. We'll, we'll go to our next photo here. Uh, here for this next one, it's in New York City in the early 1970s. Um, it's a few transgender males here um, or cross dressers and they're, they're getting ready to go out for a night on the town. Um, and this was in a time here where this wasn't very accepted in society, honestly. And just looking at, at their faces and their expression, they're so proud and passionate of who they are and they've totally embraced themselves completely. And that's something that's totally um, something that I think all of us, like just having that confidence in ourselves is something that we all strive to do. And this photograph really, uh, really captures that. Um, I kind of just notice, especially the the guy all the way left, how he's sort of putting on that lipstick so passionately and really just kind of taking himself in with this new look. Uh, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I, I agree. Just the confidence is actually like inspirational in a sense, um, just because they don't care, you know, what other people think, because like you said, this definitely was not as accepted as it is nowadays and even nowadays you know it's not 100 percent accepted so the fact that these people were kind of at the beginning stages of this revolution it's pretty cool and it's cool to see in this picture our next photo we have um some some bikers here as part of the counterculture during the vietnam war era um i think right off the bat for me myself i won't go too much into the history of the photo i'll let someone kind of talk about that but just looking at sort of their the black and white imagery with their jackets how some like the chain and the, the zipper how that really stands out uh so, along with some of the jewelry hanging off their jacket it really kind of catches the eye um obviously you notice their hair slicked back they have that sort of greaser look um sort of that whole macho man uh, persona going here. Um, so what, what, what time period is this from? So this is actually in from 1965 during the Vietnam war era. Uh, these two pals are nicknamed Sparky and Cowboy. This is actually a pretty notorious photo. Um, one of the individuals had just gotten back from the war and they're both actually waiting at Dairy Queen for their girlfriends to get off work. 
Um, so I don't know, this picture just kind of makes you feel like you're there. It's just, it feels so real. And as for, and I, like he said, it just really caught our attention. Um, I don't know if it's the bling of the jewelry or just the fact that no one really, it wasn't common to dress like this back then. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that stands out. Yeah, these guys definitely totally embraced the the whole counterculture movement of the 60s, uh, all, all that sort of stuff. I don't know, did you mention that one of them actually had just come back from the war? Yeah, so one of them had just come back from the war. Um, I don't know if he was relieved of duty or, you know, left. I don't know the details of that. But when he came back, these two, Cowboy and Sparky, actually joined a biker gang of some sort called the Renegades. Um, I don't know the details as to whether they were, um, you know, I'm sure they weren't like violent, you know, they're waiting for their girlfriends to get off a week of, <laughs> off of work from Dairy Queen, but they look like cool guys. It caught our attention. Um, just the idea of the counterculture from the Vietnam War era. This is almost the antithesis of a soldier, a bunch of soldiers in uniform, all looking the same. These guys basically did the antithesis of that. So that's why this caught our attention. Yeah, later on in the presentation, we have uh, another photograph from that era that also sort of exemplifies that whole counterculture movement. Uh, this one's pretty interesting as well. Um, you have, just right off the bat, you can sort of see, I have two elderly white women walking past these two African-American shoppers. Um, and the first thing that I noticed was sort of how huddled closely together these women are in the front they're not even kind of making any eye contact with the other people in the photo, kind of walking by. They seem just in body language. It's, it, they don't look too, uh, I don't know, welcoming to the other people in the photo. And then even in the background, the woman all the way in the back, you can see her kind of with her eyes, kind of looking out of the corner of, at, corner of her eyes at these two women walking by. Um, I think this really highlight some of the tensions from this era um uh, just in one photo kind of the differences between how how tough things were down in the south back in the civil rights era yeah yeah totally so this does take place in the streets of new orleans down in the south um interestingly i kind of noticed the fact that almost it's almost as if the african-american women aren't too um you know dazed or like shook by the fact that these women are shunning them just because this was so common given the time era. And that's just, you know, sad to think about the fact that these African-American women are just grocery shopping and they're being shunned and they're like, Oh, well, I'm used to that. And I don't know, it's cool to see this image, just the contrast of two white women and two African-American women. And the fact that the white women are just clearly think they're superior for whatever reason. And, yeah, absolutely. Cool. absolutely. Going into our, our last photograph here, I think this is uh, probably my favorite photograph that we selected, um, just because there's so much here to look at. Uh, we have a, a Vietnam War era protest um, outside the Capitol building. And then just looking at the vast crowd here, it's, it's amazing how many people were really against this war and how many people really fought for peace. Um, my eye really kind of gravitated to the Capitol building first, um, just because it's such a, a U.S. monument in our minds that, that people kind of realize and look at as a, a strength of like our government and our power and how all these people sort of went against all that when they, when they organized here. Um, so what did you, you notice here first? Yeah, um, I would say the Capitol building sticks out as well, obviously. Um, Interestingly, in the description, it says that the majority of the people there were actually Vietnam veterans um, fighting against, you know, this war demonstration. So it's not just wives and children, you know, saying, please don't send my husband. This is actually people who have gone to war, experienced it, come back, and are now demonstrating the fact that they didn't agree with this war. And I think that makes it more powerful just because... The fact that they are veterans, you know, they have that experience. Yeah, absolutely. I think the artist or the photographer himself does a, a great job of capturing 
the magnitude of this crowd. I mean, obviously you have in the front, you see people's faces, but as it pans out into the background, you have the, the peace flag being held up, which is a great symbol for what these people were striving for. But then you also just have this sort of thing where it's just black and white sort of dots of people's heads and the clothing that they're wearing. And it, it seems to go on forever. I mean, there's really no telling how far away he is from the Capitol building. It, it could be a few hundred yards. And it's really just a sea of people that are, that are fighting for a common goal. Um, which Absolutely. Is and I, with the fact that there's so many people, I think it's interesting to note this was the 1971, the 70s, that that um, peace sign does stick out to me as well. But you have people in like very formal, as if like they were going to a business meeting. You have people like that ranging from total hippies with like long hair and peace signs. So just the vast majority of these people protesting and the diversity in people is very interesting, powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think all of these photos kind of had a similarity in the fact that they all have a very powerful message behind them. It's a lot of uh, people fighting for change or, or people being succumbed to, to conditions that they aren't necessarily happy with and, and fighting for something. And I think this photo is uh, probably the most powerful just because there's so many people involved in it. It's not just one or two people in a photograph. It's, it looks like thousands, could be tens of thousands of people at once. And it's kind of amazing to see what can happen. Um, when an artist does capture this all in one shot. Absolutely. Um, so that's our presentation. Thank you for looking at these photographs with us. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it.